more of a weights guy than cardio. Give me a second here. Seriously, we're gonna have to just chill. We built this into the show, don't worry. How y'all doing tonight? We got the performers tonight. Everybody else is, uh, no, please, get up to the performers tonight. I just want to start off by saying one thing that's a very important thing. I am happy and I am relaxed. I am happy and I am relaxed. I am happy and I am relaxed. Woo! <laughs> so, in this gender, non-biased, non-conformist world that we're moving into, I have come to realize I was born to be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> but I identify as a personal trainer. <laughs> as a personal trainer, I see a lot of weird stuff that people are doing to try to solve this riddle of what is fitness. Not you people, but you know, other people. <laughs> For example, have you heard of this new process that you can put yourself through? Regenerates bodily tissues and releases human growth hormone, and it's backed by science. You guys know what this is? You wanna know what it is? Yeah. Yeah. A nap. <laughs> <laughs> Took one today, it was nice. It regenerated. What about this new fitness tracker that's out? Helps you to monitor your water intake, basically keeps you optimally hydrated. What I like about it is that Got lost, that's okay. What I like about it is that uh, you can basically, you can basically, you basically use it very discreetly. No one knows you're using it. You know what it's called? Thirst, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. That's Drake bourbon, all right. Just what I needed, just what I needed, all right. Okay, you guys think I'm messing with you. This one, proven results. It's a, it's a diet exercise program, also includes a martial arts self-defense component. Requires a big commitment up front. That's how you get really, that's how you get the results. Big commitment up front. Three meals a day. And uh, what else do you get? Three meals a day. Uh, anyway, regardless, <laughs> sorry. I'm like, what else do you get with this? Oh, so three meals a day and you know, you cannot leave the program at any point. You want to know what it is? Prison. Prison. Yes. And your first workout is called Don't Drop the Soap. <laughs> so why are we, what are we talking about here? We're talking about fitness, okay? Webster's Dictionary defines fitness as the mental and physical ability to adapt to one's changing environment. So we're talking about adaptation. I'm still out of breath, Jesus. <laughs> Webster's also, the second definition of fitness is the ability for a species to pass on its genes through reproductive offspring. So we're talking about sex. So when you're posting those booty shots on Instagram, if it helps you find a mate, that's fitness. Yeah. Yeah. But let's not forget about adaptation, right? There are a lot of species that once existed on this planet that are now extinct, and with that, I'd like to give you my impression of the Tyrannosaurus Rex towards the end of the Cretaceous period. <laughs> Hold on, it's worth it. It's so worth it. Take so it off. <laughs> actually, claims there's a meteor about to strike the planet. It's gonna cause some sort of climate change. There's no climate change. There's no global cooling, okay? No global cooling. We're gonna be around for a really long time. Really long, okay? It's true. We're gonna be around for a really long time, okay? All right. So if we want 
to solve this riddle, we got to go back to the beginning, right? Because we're the, we're the victims of a lot of history, right? So I think we go back to the beginning of time, 14 billion years ago, we can start to solve this problem. So, this universe began with a violent sexual explosion called the Big Bang. <laughs> the Big Bang. The Big Bang. Sounds like a porno. Sounds like a porno, at least the ones I saw in the 70s. Uh, from the 70s. I wasn't watching porno in the 70s. <laughs> keep it accurate, keep it accurate. So, look, I'm telling you, this universe is found on sex. There could be a universe founded on Doritos, but that would be a flavor explosion. <laughs> at least that's what I think. Or maybe this is just my Big Bang Theory. Oh, okay, all right. We're keeping it moving, we're keeping it moving here. So, there are 250 billion stars in our galaxy. There are also two different age stars. And this has baffled scientists for years until they realized that during the orgy of chaos that was the Big Bang, Galaxy A and Galaxy B scissored, <laughs> forming the Milky Way galaxy. <laughs> and that's what happens when two galaxies scissor. It gets milky. <laughs> Am I making you uncomfortable? <laughs> Tell that to Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> So a star is born, a star is born. And I'm not talking about Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. I'm talking about, no, but I'm talking about great chemistry, great chemistry between our sun and planet Earth. Just a billion years after they got together, microbial life could be found teeming in the oceans. And just 3.5 billion years later, today, you can go onto YouTube and watch a commercial about a squatty potty where a unicorn takes a rainbow ice cream shit into an ice cream cone and people eat it. This is where your ice cream comes. Bring it proof of a mystic unicorn. Totally clean, totally cool, and soft serve straight from a sphincter. Mm, they're good at pooping. But you know who sucks at pooping? You do. That's because when you sit on a porcelain drone, this muscle is okay, kicking out. Okay, okay, okay. 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 I think we got it. So, yeah, I mean, that's there for you to, you know, we'll, we'll put the uh, links in the show notes so you guys can check it out. Uh, so, the uh, Mystic Unicorn, yes. So, our star is actually uh, four and a half billion years old, which makes it middle-aged in star years. If our star was a human being, it'd be about 42 years old, suffer from plantar fasciitis, have two kids constantly orbiting, <laughs> looking in the mirror like, oh my God, I'm not getting any sleep with the bags under these eyes, the crow's feet coming in. Isn't Botox preventative? Can you do that? Is it still, is that manly? I don't know. Uh, and gray hairs in the beard, running a small business. Oh my God, I didn't realize there'd be so much responsibility. All I ever wanted to do was make people on the earth happy. So I get up, crack at dawn, shine my light on the world, and try to help a few more people reach their fitness goals. <laughs> Look, it wasn't all rainbows and unicorns, okay? <laughs> Life blossomed, then nearly went extinct five times, okay? It's like as if every 100 million years on this planet, the Earth is like, Oh, um, I think I need to do like a juice cleanse. You know I mean? Just like a little reset, you know what I mean? Like a juice cleanse, get things started again, you know what I'm saying? A little master cleanse, a little lemon juice. You know, so, why am I bringing all this shit up? Why am I taking you guys on this bizarro journey to the outer realms of the galaxy? It's because it took 14 billion years, a collision of galaxies, in order for life to form, then almost die out five times. 
before an upright walking species of apes began to use intellect to manipulate resources for their survival. Only to manipulate those resources so well that it might cause our own downfall. <laughs> <laughs>
Check it out. I just got a new smart TV. Maybe some of y'all can come home with me after the show and help me figure out how to set it up. <laughs> it's got an Alexa and a sound bar and it has about six remotes. I think you guys know how to work that, right? <laughs> True, it doesn't happen. Okay, so, boomers. In 1951, President Eisenhower had to establish the President's Council for Youth Fitness. Because, and you know the thing with the toe touch and the hang, everybody hates it. Because you had to do as kids, right? Everybody had to do the yeah. stupid thing. He had to establish that because 60% of American high school students failed a fitness test that only 9% of Europeans failed. Meaning, the boomers were soft. Sadly. Sadly. And what they needed was role, role models, and role models they got. In the 1960s, Jack Lane came right into your living room and taught you how to, that you could be fit into any age. And then uh, uh, you had uh, at the end of the 60s, Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee taught you the art of fighting, fighting. In 1970, Arnold Schwarzenegger showed us that you know you could come from, you could an immigrant could move to our country and become a machine. A man could become a machine, a Terminator. <laughs> Oh, no, not yet. No, can't do that yet. <laughs> Don't do that. So, and then in the middle of the 70s, we had uh, the Battle of Sexes, Billie Jean King versus that old man. And she wasn't thrilled about meeting the old man, but she did say she was thrilled to introduce another new generation to tennis. At the end of the 70s, we had Stallone and Rocky made boxing popular. And Rocky taught us that a blue collar guy from the streets of Philadelphia could become a champion. And then in the early 80s, we had Jane Fonda. And Jane Fonda gave us, she gave us aerobics, spandex, and political activism. And it was Jane. Yeah. And she was the first influencer. If you want to think about it, I mean, that's what everybody on, on Instagram is doing now. It's like, hey, check out my ass. And by the way, I'm really into you know, saving the pets and everything. <laughs> and then, oh, and then at the end of the 80s, we had Richard Simmons. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the oldest. And Richard taught that you that fitness should be fun, yeah. accessible, and what? Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got in the 90s, and, and Suzanne Summers, you know, she tried, you know, to be fair. <laughs> she tried, okay? She tried. She tried, all right? So this is supposed to tone your whole body. <laughs> Something tells me it's really more about just looking at Suzanne Summers doing this. <laughs> 1995, you got it, Suzanne. We'll do that. Uh, and, you know, and that was cool. And, you know, the 90s were really, I think people just got maybe sick of celebrities, or maybe it was just the grunge rock thing. I don't know. But they were just an abundance. <laughs> abundance of things that I don't really know. That's how you do it. That's how you get it done. was in the back room. <laughs> and I needed an app roller for this bit because this thing made one billion dollars. A billion dollars in sales. Actually, I thought this thing was the app roller, but this is even more a piece of junk than I know it's called. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything else in here. Uh, oh, shoot, I almost forgot. This is so important. You guys are gonna love this. Here's my, I'm so carrot top right now, I hate myself. <laughs> okay, you know, this is important. This is very important. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't think it's gonna be worth it. I'm gonna tear it. Yeah, it's gonna get ugly here, people. Oh. All right, you got the point. You got the point. You got the point. You got the point. You got the point.
All right, so we get to the 2000s. And the 2000s are pretty special. Started off with Pilates, kettlebell, P90X, yoga, bar, TRX. Insanity! 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 Oh my god! Insanity! 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 The shake weight? Yeah! Zumba! <laughs> Fitbit, spin class, hot yoga, hip, crossfit. Maybe I should get an Apple Watch. <laughs> Forget it! Now, I'm hard on my contemporaries. I am hard on my contemporaries because I feel like I was mentored and brought up just in the right environment. They kind of gave me like a really sensitive bullshit meter. You know? I mean, I don't know, I think you guys can smell this one pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, that dangerous works good. So, my first mentor, was my grandfather, Peter Schutte. And Peter, six, three, six foot, three inches tall, he played football when they wore leather helmets. He's one of the members of the greatest generation as he served in World War II. Now, he would go into a hardware store, they'd ask him to bend a nail. A nail's so big, I didn't even want to bring it on stage and embarrass myself by not being able to bend it. You can't bend the nail, that's for sure. But what he taught me was, real strength comes from the inside. It's my father. Bob Schutte, handball champion. In this case, runner up. <laughs> champion nonetheless. Champion. Got champion written all over. He was so competitive with himself when he was playing handball that he missed a shot. He would yell at himself, God damn it, Bob! What the hell's the matter with you? And I took that competitive spirit into my life today. You know, if there's any parts that didn't go right for the show, you can be sure you'll hear some stuff being broken. Now. <laughs> God damn it, Adam! What the hell's the matter with you? Putting on a plastic suit in front of people without taking off your shoes? <laughs> Come on. My lacrosse coach, Ridge Dibb. Ridge, you can see this guy's got a great demeanor. He, he was, a, he was, I don't know, I think it was like a Michael Jordan. He expected you to play up to his level. He wouldn't come down to yours. So, he just brought out the best in you, and you wanted to, you know, wanted nothing more than to please him. And if I screwed up, and I saw him on the sideline, he'd just be shaking his head walking. And I knew, I knew. God damn it, Adam! <laughs> Shoot the damn ball. So, uh, uh, then I went and I had a job working auto body with this gentleman, Al Ketter. That's his only photo on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what Al taught me, Al had this kind of just quiet confidence. He knew there's always going to be more cars coming in like this. So we just worked quietly, confidently, day in and day out. And we, we made works of art out of something that was junk. That's kind of what I do in my personal training practice today. <laughs> Wasn't supposed to be a joke, but I can see that it was funny. The fact is, we're getting you here. If you leave looking like this, in your mind. And, and lastly, no photo available. When I was in college, I was trying to find my way. And I walked into the most beautiful experience that I had in my life at that time. It was a martial arts class. And the guy who taught the class was the greatest enigma that I've ever encountered. He's about this tall, about this wide. He looked like a cross between Johnny Cash and John Wayne, and was from Tennessee. He had a PhD in resource conservation and was a master of Chinese martial arts. All I want to do is get noticed by this guy. All I want to do is have him tell me that I was, his, that I was on my way. And for two years, I trained at his school, and he never looked at me once. He would 
walked right past me until one day he turned and looked me square in the eye and he said, you've been training here for two years, you think you're pretty hot shit, huh? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna give you guys the secret. This is the secret. This is how it all begins. This is where it starts right now. This is the seed that got planted. You wanna be a master? There's gonna be some winding roads you go down. And there's gonna be a ton of fear that you have to face in every one of those turns. But if you want to become a master, you can never, ever quit.